So, young Leslie, where, where, where do you originate from, Leslie, if you just want to tell the viewers? Uh, yeah, so I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, but I actually live in Jacksonville, Florida now with my husband and two kids. Okay. And uh, tell us a little bit about your childhood. Like, what, what was that like in, uh, was it Jacksonville, Missouri, that you grew up? St. Louis, Missouri. Um and yeah, so, I mean, gosh, just in general, my childhood, um, I had two older sisters. So, you know, growing up as the youngest, you, you kind of, you, you go along, right? Because the two of them gang up on you. Um, that would be probably the majority of my younger years is, you know, having fun with my sisters or fighting with them, whichever one came first. Um, my parents um, traveled a lot with us. My mom worked for the airlines. So we went to all 50 states by the time I was 18. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, and my dad was a baseball coach. So I would say in probably 30 of those states, I saw a baseball field of some sort um, and potentially a baseball game as well. So, so yeah, that's the majority of what we did when I was little. Okay. And uh, how did you fit in with your peers, like socially? Uh, you, you, were, you were okay with your peers or did you struggle a little bit there? Yeah, so uh, what's funny is, is my one of my best friends from high school actually said that when she met me, she was first, at first she was scared of me, which I think is funny, um, but it, it was just my personality. I'm very, an, uh, I'm an upfront person with you and I'm a little bit more blunt than other people would I guess, say that they are, I'm going to call it like it is. I'm going to tell you how it is. And it's kind of take it or leave it. Right. I'm not here to, um, you know, sugarcoat anything, I guess. So I got along well with people, but I would say that there was a lot of people that would tell you the same thing. Like they were scared at me at first, or I'm a little bit more blunt. I think I, I think somebody used the word abrasive once and then changed it back to blunt. So <laughs> I got along with people, but you didn't come to me if you wanted to have the it's okay answer. Okay, I, I, I got you. So, so what led you to uh, your struggles with eating and uh, like, did you start getting into food and you liked that? Was you, was you, you had some emotional pressures or, or you just liked eating? Yeah, so, so when I became, so I was slightly overweight in high school. I think that my biggest issues came when I was a freshman in high school. I was, you know, I didn't really understand. I, I did understand social status, like you're popular or you're not popular at the time. Um, I could understand those kinds of things, but nothing ever came through to me that I wasn't one of the cool kids per se. Um, and so one day in the hallway, one of the girls was just kind of like, yeah, I'm really sorry. You're fun. I like hanging out with you in class, but you're too big to hang out with us. And that's when I was like, okay, wait, what, what, like, what's going on here? I don't really understand. Like, what do you mean too big? I was healthy weight. I literally was like, and now that I'm a dietitian and a personal trainer, like I know that I was a healthy weight. I was not on the low end of healthy. I was on the middle to higher end of healthy. But if you looked at my BMI, my height versus my weight, like I was proportional, uh, but that wasn't acceptable. So it was then that, you know, I think I began a like a love hate relationship with food, a love hate of, you know, gosh, if I eat this, then I could become bigger. So let me eat more of this because then I can control and not get bigger and not have that girl say that next thing to me or have somebody else, you know, comment about that. Um, and I think I never became controlling really during high school. It was, you know, try to diet. I did lots of things with my mom. I think we did Weight Watchers at one point. Um, it was around 16 years old when I was like, I'm going to work out every morning at 5 a.m. with my mom. And I did. But that wasn't so much as a way to control weight as it was, I think, for an endorphin rush for me. Um, and then that just kind of became like an addicting thing that I did. But from there, I started to gain weight in high school when I, I think it probably had something to do with birth control at the time because they were like, oh, it'll help you lose weight. So I was like, oh, OK, well, I'll just eat what I want. Then. And, you know, I gained a little bit. That was me. I'm not blaming yeah. the birth control by any means. It was me yeah. hearing, oh, this is going to help me lose weight so I can just eat what I want. Right. Have a free yeah. for all. So I did gain a little bit of weight then towards the end of my high school. And then as soon as I got to college, it was 
and I was going to school to be a dietitian, that's when I realized like I could really seriously manipulate what I was eating to get the result that I wanted to get. Yeah. Um, and there was a period of time that I think I went through having a slight eating disorder. I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was eating um, from the standpoint of taking some nutrition classes. I was giving myself enough nourishment so I wouldn't die, quote unquote, but I definitely wasn't nourishing my body properly. I was definitely abusing it in a different way to try to get myself to lose the weight faster. As I was becoming a dietitian, I thought to myself, well, I want to play the part appropriately. That's when I realized at that point that like between the swings of everything and becoming a dietitian, I needed to get my mindset right and wrap around how to properly eat in order to get myself the result and then to learn so that way I would be a good dietitian myself. So so your so your uh, your your struggle with eating wasn't all related related to your professional life. Uh, it, it it went back to how how you felt uh, amongst your peers when you were young when, when that you know when that girl at school turned around and said you know about you know the the way you looked and your weight and and that triggered something within you to um you know to to question that like but before that you never questioned anything in respect to uh your your appearance not really i mean you know i would say the grade school that i went to i went to a catholic grade school i went to a catholic high school too not that that matters but I, we were small class. It was like 19 of us in my grade school class. And we were all very nice to each other um, with exceptions. Right. So I was, I was always like, I call myself the middle ground, right? I wasn't the top of the cream, of the crap, but I wasn't the one at the bottom that was constantly made fun of or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I think maybe in seventh or eighth grade, I processed that there were two girls in the class that were extremely pretty, that were getting more of the attention from the guys, but that wasn't really where I was, I think in sixth or seventh or eighth grade. Um, but maybe I started to notice then. I think that's the last time I, re like, I remember my weight, like the first time I can recollect getting weighed and what I weighed, I was in eighth grade. Um, I can remember the number on the scale. I can remember what I, having the conversation with the doctor, like, is this healthy? Like, I don't really know. And she's like, yeah, you're completely healthy. Um, and she had actually said herself, like, you, you're always normal. You're just on the upper end of normal, right? Um, and I was like, okay, that's cool. So I don't really mind that. And then it wasn't until that girl had said that in high school when I realized like, oh, the social status is based on how I weigh and what I look like. Yeah. That was probably the big kicker there. Um, and then it kind of got worse from there. My own, my high school coach actually wouldn't let me do certain things for our softball team because I was bigger. So she was like, well, you can't play varsity yet because you don't have enough pop up fast enough and you can't you can't play varsity because you can't swing the other direction because you're not a fast runner. Um, so basically you need to lose weight in order to play better. And it's like, if I could throw the ball and hit my mark as a, as a catcher, there's nothing I'm missing here. Right. Like yeah. a catcher doesn't have to run that fast. Like, I mean, look at any baseball team that's out there. Your pitcher is the worst hitter in the world. Right. <laughs> and your catcher is somebody else. Right. So that's really when, that's really when I think both of those things within my freshman year really gave me that, oh, weight, weight matters. Like yeah, that's sure. on how good I'm going to be socially on, on if I'm cared about or if people want to respect me in a certain way. Yeah. So, so like, how bad did this get for you? Like this, this weight issue, you know, like uh, how bad did your life become through, through this, uh, I suppose an inadequacy because you're young, you're vulnerable, uh, you're very innocent, you know, going through your, your younger years and, you know, and, and what people say to you, 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 we all get affected by that. Like, you know, like how, how bad did this get for you? Like, did you start behaving in other ways where you wanted other attention or, you know, did you, did you go into your shell? Um, you know, like how bad did it get for you in there as far as eating? Yeah, so I think it's a good question. I think the big thing that changed in my life from, from that perspective was I started compensating in being smarter, if that makes sense. So I, I, yeah, I pushed myself to be 
the brightest that I could be. Yeah. I learned in my school, if you got a 4.0, three quarters of the year, you got a white sweater and you only got a white sweater if you did that. And then each year you got a Chevron and things like that. So I dove into that kind of stuff. Well, if I can't be the best at weight or things like that, what else could I be? Um, I also did chorus my freshman year. You had to try out to be in it. Uh, and then to get into it, your sophomore year to be an advanced chorus, you had to, again, do a do a uh, what do you call that I just said it like rehearse to get in kind yeah, of thing. yeah 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 and so I did and I was in and once you're in as a sophomore you get to stay in through your senior year so that was another way I compensated right if you're not going to give it to me sports wise I'm going to go for a different way so I went music wise I didn't go to the advanced so I was in advanced course but then outside of that there was like a small group that met after school I didn't go for that because it's not really my forte but that would be where I dove in I dove into those two things and I think in some way that's why I became such a avid exerciser mm. not as a way to control my weight but as a way to prove that I was still fit that I was still doing what I wanted to do so mm. after the softball coach thing happened I played lacrosse my freshman year um, but during that period of time the girls didn't it wasn't just my weight then it was I wasn't the same social status they yeah. had more money than what I came from um, so that was part of the deal there um, and so then I decided not to play lacrosse my sophomore year. I ran track and field. Well, they wouldn't let me run track. I, they would only let me throw field like the shot put. And I was like, well, this isn't what I want to do. I was doing this to like run and to work out more. Like here I am lifting weights, which was good, but wasn't my thing at the time and throwing a shot put, which is basically like throwing a softball, but in a different way. And then the combination of the two, sometimes like my brain would get confused. Are we throwing the softball? Are we throwing the shot put? They're like basically the same thing. Yeah. Um, so that, that kind of ruined it there. So it was more of a, I'll, I'll be the smart one right? I'll, I'll put all my work into to school. And then I will also, you know, do chorus that continued definitely through college. I definitely was like, I'm getting good grades. I've got one B my entire college. And that was an organic chemistry because that to me was like foreign language. I swear it's like Spanish yeah. on a page. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I prided myself. It was like, if I can't be the skinny one, I'll be the smart one who works out, right? Something along those lines is what yeah. I went with. And, 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 and most people do that right. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, if, uh, you know, if you think I'm lacking in this area, I'll show you what I can do in, in, in that other area. And, um, you know, that, 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 that's the good thing out of struggle, that what, what I found through my struggle, that it, it motivated me to become more than what I was. You know, we, we, you know, we can look at struggle and, and look at hard times and look at adversity and, and go, oh, you know, that, that was terrible that I've been through that. But when you actually use it as leverage to move beyond uh, and, and, you know, if, if, it's good, if it's a good place to move into, like learning uh, and, you know, and becoming something better than, than what you are and developing yourself and nutrition and, and other form of academia that that's a great thing I, I can remember uh, because I was told I was ugly when I was a child so I, 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 I made sure because I thought that I wasn't good enough and I didn't look good enough that I was going to get attention in other areas so I become crazy I become the best car stealer I become the best thief I become a really good fighter but it was all based around that core, where that started from. And um, yeah, I, I think that's the good thing about struggle. So, so, so when, did, when did you start coming out of that? You know, like when did you start seeing it all for what it was? And you said, well, I can see this. I, I can see what I've been doing. You know, like uh, I'm, I'm going to put this behind me or... You know, what, what, how old was you when you started identifying a lot of it? Yeah, so I think it, it, a lot came in college. So when it came into college and I was like, okay, now I'm going to do this for a living, right? I'm oh, going to sure. be a dietitian. I'm going to yeah. help people with their health and fitness. Yeah. If that's going to be the case, to me, it was very important for me to to feel the part. Now, I don't want to say look the part because I still feel to this day, somebody could look at me and be like, well, she needs to work on X, Y, and Z, right? And yeah. I don't care. 
That's yeah. your level, not mine, right? And I thank you for your opinion, but you can keep it, right? Exactly. Like I feel comfortable with myself. So instead of really viewing it from that standpoint, I wanted to be comfortable. I wanted to be confident. I wanted to know that I would know how to help them. Um, so when I went through the, I, I really don't call it an eating disorder because it wasn't like anorexia. I was eating enough. Yeah. It wasn't bulimia because I wasn't throwing up. People could maybe say I had that ex exercise version of it. I always forget the excessive exercise disorder. That could totally have been me. I probably qualified for that for a period of time. And it was during that that I'm like, okay, I need to be healthy. Like we need to focus on being healthy. And that's when I flipped it. And I changed my transition of everything I had learned, right? All the dieting I had done, all the crazy things I had done, how weight controlled me. And I started to really look at it from an angle of mindset, like, how do I control my mind to help me achieve this? And to this day, so I was probably around like 18 to 20 when I started to really think about it, 20 to 22 when I started to really implement it. Um, and why 20 to 22 was because there was a period of time when, you know, like in the States, you start to be able to drink alcohol at 21. So when we would drink alcohol and I'd have more than three drinks, I would literally go for like a quarter of a mile to a half a mile run and come back. and drink. <laughs> like it was like, okay, punishment. Right. And that's yeah. when I knew that the unhealthy behavior I had had now become into this. Right. So the unhealthy behavior of, you know, me not to say it's unhealthy, but that crazy behavior of being the best at school and being the best in chorus and things like that, then became this behavior of, okay, let me be the best version of myself, the skinniest, the fittest, the how can I control as many calories and things that are going in to get my body to where it was. And that's still unhealthy. And I feel that sometimes that's where people see like, oh, that's what I need to do in order to achieve it. No, you don't have to count every little thing and pay attention to every little thing and be like, no, I can't dine out here or do this. And that's when my mindset around 22 was like, I want to just live. Like I want to eat healthy. I want to look good for myself, not caring what the other people think on the outside. And I want to do it in a way where I'm in control. Like if I want to eat the pizza, I eat the pizza. But if somebody brings pizza and I don't want it, I want to be able to say no and not constantly think about the pizza for the rest of the day. Right. Um, so that's when I think it, it came into my mind was probably around 22 and that's when I started to use that myself little by little. And as I would see patterns, I always talk about when I was 24 and I joined the military, I went up to a school in Rhode Island, which was five weeks long. And there was a three, like four weeks in, or four weeks in, I lost my mind. I was so sad. I was crying hysterically. Oh, wow. I had never been away from my mom this long. I know I'm 24 and it sounds sad, but it was true. I missed oh, her so sad. bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I called her crying one day because oh. they allowed abnormal, but the, the chief at the time was like, I don't know what to do with her. Somebody get her to stop <laughs> crying. So they let me call my mom. I call my mom and immediately, like after she told me everything was going to be okay, I stopped crying. But all I wanted was chocolate. Like I had to eat chocolate and I couldn't figure out why, but I couldn't get any. I was stuck in the school, no caffeine, no chocolate, none of that kind of stuff. So it was super controlled. For three days, I'm just like, I've got to find this chocolate. And that's when I realized when we were little, a lot of times my mom would give us chocolate when we felt bad, or we would use chocolate if we fell down. And so this is why I need this. So like the light bulb clicks. Okay. I figured out my pattern. I need to figure out another way to cope with this because I'm going to live in a different state than my mom now. So I'm not yeah. going to see her every three to four weeks. Yeah. Um, and that's really when I started to notice, oh, this is a real thing. And then I started to implement it with some of my um, first initial clients that I had through the Naval Hospital and then so on and so forth. That's how I began into my own journey of what I, I teach is called mindset dieting. And that's to try to break the patterns that you're doing why are people why do we constantly diet why do we constantly try to try a new shake or do the same thing why is it that there's times where we do it and then we don't do it and we can see our own cycles we have to break it and i help people see all these patterns so you don't come to me to get that sugar coated oh it's okay you're doing your best you come to me to get the solution yeah. and that, right that's ultimately how i channeled it like this is what i want but that bluntness that i told you about in the beginning is, is <laughs> because I call you out. Like I call you out when you're like, I just don't see why this is working. This is why this isn't working. Right. Yeah. And I need you to see that answer. And so that's how I've, you know, channeled that into this, you know, newfound energy of, I want you to learn how to mindset diet for yourself and you to be in control, you to have that ability like myself to be like, I want that pizza. I'm going to eat that pizza versus like, I really don't want the pizza. You guys can all eat the pizza, but I'm going to eat something else and be okay with it.
Yeah. You know? So. so it's uh it, it it's there's an emotional component in there yeah like you 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 look back to your patterns with um with wanting your mum and uh straight away you 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 want a chocolate when you're in pain you know or when there's a separation you there with the people you love and the people that you connect with and um yeah very similar to, to a lot of people that that fall into not just addictions. I, I, I think that's underestimated. That um, you know the connection that we all start with it within our family unit and the people that we need in our lives when we haven't got that or when there's a separation in that, um, you, you, you can become really um, yeah destructive. You can become addictive in there. You know, like you can substitute one thing for the other. And um, I, 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 I can I can definitely relate to that. So um, so so okay, that's motiv motivated you to, you know, uh, get the skills from an academic point of view to help people with nutrition, and 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 you've done that, and you've set out, and and you've achieved that, and you're still achieving that. So um, your, your self esteem these days, what, what what's it like these days? I definitely believe I have a lot of self-esteem. I think I've always had a lot of self-esteem. I think there have been times in my life that I've allowed myself to play like I don't have self-esteem to fit in, if that makes sense. Um, I, think, I think sometimes I struggle with that as well, right? Because to this day, it's still like, I like you or I dislike you, right? That I'm done with you. You know, in today's social media and, and today's anything, if somebody doesn't like you, right, they get rid of you or they cancel you, right? And like the big media nowadays, if you say something wrong, you're canceled, right? Nobody likes that feeling. Um, and so I think in terms of that, sometimes I have that and there'll be a day or two where I'm like, gosh, I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done that. But the truth is, is that that's my own thoughts, right? I said it because it was true. I understood that the person got a little bit offended from it because not everybody's ready to be called out on, on the patterns that they're doing, right? They're not ready to be called out of like, you're telling me that you want to lose weight right now, but literally you just gave me seven reasons why you can't. And they're all excuses. They're mm. all excuses. Like literally you're making up the excuses on why you can't, because you don't want to do the thing. I'm going to help you do the thing and to get through these excuses. It's a yes or a no. Are you ready to break those excuses or not? And people don't like that. They're like, those aren't excuses. Sometimes when, you know, anybody hears no 20 times in a row, you're like, am I doing the right thing? Right. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes plays on my self-esteem, but the truth is I am, I know I am because the people that work with me wind up in a place where they're in control, where they have the power to say, you know, it's cold and rainy outside today. I need to get groceries, but I don't have any. I have a salad and cold pizza. So today I'm gonna eat salad and cold pizza, make that decision, still pay attention to what I'm eating, move more around the house or whatever it is they decide to do. And I'll go get groceries tomorrow when it's not cold and rainy outside, right? So, and so, make that so, decision. Yeah, so, 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 through your experience and your personal experience, people can't shift until they identify number one that they have a problem with with eating, and number two, it's going to take discipline. It's going to take them to to make a choice to for them to see what they're doing and go, okay, A, good, B, bad, and that's a choice. And and if they if they don't arrive at that then they're just going to fluctuate in and out, in and out, in and out. And the best approach you're saying and, and what you've done, you're just making that real clear. Uh, you, yeah. you know, you, you're, 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 you're not sugarcoating it. You're saying, well, you either go this way and you go this way. How many people do you, I, I know it's a generalisation and you probably haven't got the data or numbers on it, but how many people decide, yes, I see it. Yes, okay, I, I do see it. I'm going to make changes and thank you for your insight. Like, because that, that must make you feel good when you get people go, ah, oh, Leslie, I see it. Thank you. Yes, I, I know what it's going to take. Uh, how many people do you think get it? So uh, out of all the clients, I would say, I would say all of them have but three. Gotcha. And that was because a, they chose not to accept it. They yeah. chose not to 
So they chose not to decide. So by choosing not to decide, they chose to stay the same, right? So there's never a way that we choose not to choose, right? If we choose not to do anything, we stay the same, okay? Or we progress worse in that direction, right? So I'm not ready to accept that. I don't want to make the decision to choose in those things. So I choose to neglect you and continue on in my progress, which may be gaining weight at the time or not being in control of the food at the time. Do, do, do uh, you think, Leslie, do you think you could apply that in, in a lot of things? in life? Of course. Yeah, for sure. What I've literally, some of the things that I'm learning now from yeah. a standpoint of mindset and business, which I didn't have, like I have my nutrition background and my fitness background, but I'm not, we weren't taught business in school and I don't have a business degree as I'm learning it from business. I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm seeing like, that's what you're doing for me for business, but I did it for this person for fitness. Exactly. But it's like, you know, you're, People, we all have a different skill set, right? But so many people are like afraid. They're afraid for their self esteem, as you just asked me, to yes. ask for help. Yes. It's like asking for help is the worst thing in the world, whereas asking for help is the best thing you can do, right? 100%. Literally the best thing I can do. I have plenty of coaches. I've had plenty of coaches. I will always have coaches to kind of help me because we can't see past our own block. And there's absolutely no reason why if health is something that you know you need, right? If you, which we all need it, right? If we want to survive and we want to be there for our kids, if we want to have a longevity life, if we want to be this amazing business person, we know we need our health on our sides. You just have to choose to decide that you're ready to make the decision and you're ready to make the commitment to say yes or no. Okay. And every time you're like, well, I think I'm going to keep on thinking you're telling yourself no, but you think you're doing something. you think you're progressing. Why well, talk to you? So I'm progressing. No, you're just repeating the pattern in a different way. And that's part of, you know, some of the things that I talk about, but in terms of that self-esteem, like to raise yourself up, admitting you need help is actually the best way to boost your self-esteem instead of living in this world of the thoughts of like, you suck at this, you suck at this, yes. you suck at this. You suck at yeah. this ultimately what I did when I was fat, right? But, and I really wasn't fat, but I would say that, right? Like that would be what I would say. You're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly. If I keep repeating that, that's all I'm going to get. Mm. So, so ultimately, yeah, you know, I, out of all the clients that I've worked with, again, three would be my number as of right now um, that didn't get there. And I truly believe that it was because they were unwilling to accept the decision that they had so they chose to stay the same, which isn't really the same. It's progressively getting worse, but to them, it's the it's the devil they knew, right? And 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 and, and those people that, that 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 haven't jumped on the boat at this point in, in their life, that there's nothing to say with the information and the liaison that you had with them. There's nothing to say that they're not going to get that in the future. You know, some some people. Right. Some people mightn't pick things up right here and now in certain given situations, but you know a lot of information that that I've uh, that 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 I've used for for my future uh, projects uh, has usually come from you know I wasn't ready at that point in stage. Um, yeah. So that's that's the other beauty about helping people, having a passion like yourself and a, and a drive to do things where you can support other people. Um, yeah, if, if it's not the here and now where you don't see the results, it, it still indirectly has an impact. And, um, you know, that's, that, that, that's, a, that's a really good thing. Um, yeah, but yeah, like, like I was addicted to heroin for years and um, same thing. I, I, I just took no accountability for myself. It was always somebody else's fault. There was always excuses. You know, it was it was it was this person's you know fault that this happened, or, or it was the police that that arrested me, or it was the you know it was the the the, the court that sentenced me to uh, to institutions, or it was the prison officers that turned the key on me and put me in the cell. You know, it uh, and it just kept going on and on and on and on and on. And, and it wasn't until I landed in a re rehabilitation centre in 89 that I, I got the accountability that, that you're talking about. And there was heaps of girls in there with problems uh, similar to yours, you know, and uh, anorexia and, and the girls who used to spew, you know, like, you know, there was a lot of girls in there that, that on top of that, that took a lot of drugs. Um, so... 
yeah, uh, uh, you know, addiction can be across the, the, the whole spectrum, you know. Um, but, but I really believe and, and I resonate that, that the underlying core of, of addiction, it, it, it all stems from liking ourselves. It, it all stems from love. It all stems from connection. It all stems from fitting in. Um, and, you know, when, when, when you can, as you say, when you can make a decision to hopefully start looking at that stuff and exploring that stuff, like you you did, um, then hopefully you can um, start the journey out, yeah? Yeah. And move, and, 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 and move on to, to other places, which is a lot more healthier and a, a lot more happier as, you know, you, you, you're a living example. I, 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 know you got to, I know you got to run, but just before I let you go, Leslie, it's been really good having a yarn with you. Okay. Um, yeah. And and I've loved it, uh, and and I've loved listening to your story. Uh, what advice have you got to give to young, like girls, or not just girls, females, even guys? Because Leslie, as you know, guys struggle with it too. Guys struggle with eating with for appearance to fit in. Um, females struggle with it. Is, is there any advice that that comes to you that you could? you know, sum it up where you could, there's a lot of people in Australia with the same problems where, you know, hopefully you could give a little bit of advice where, you know, these people can start the journey out and seeing it and, and taking control of, of it, you know, is, I don't know, is there anything that comes to mind? Yeah. So my top three things I always tell people is one, fuel yourself. Okay. Gotcha. Literally fuel your body because if not, number two is you'll ruin your metabolism. And, and that's, that's with food. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And that's yeah. the thing you want to keep. So keeping your metabolism is the best way to go. And that's through for you fueling yourself. No extremes, no, no if then thens, no nevers, no always kind of stuff. And then the third thing is when you know that you've been doing this for such a long time and you haven't gotten there, get yourself some help. Even if it's like, following somebody on YouTube, you know, following gotcha. somebody that's teaching something. If you need to go a free version or get yourself a coach, that's going to help you. There's a ton of information out there, but make sure the person that you're getting your their information from has some sort of background in nutrition. That is a whole big piece that I try to tell everybody. There's so much white noise out there of how somebody lost weight and that's what worked for them, but you are not them. You gotcha. need to be specific for yourself, to fuel yourself, to keep your metabolism. So find somebody with some sort of credential, whether it's a registered dietitian, a licensed dietitian, um, a doctor who specializes in nutrition and weight loss, something along those lines, and not just, you know, the girl that has a million people following them on Instagram that lost weight a certain way, because that may not be the best way for you. And the last thing you want is to waste more time not getting the result you want. Okay, no, that's yeah. uh, that, that that's really good advice, and yeah, it, it, I think it's important if you can uh, separate that. Or yeah, it's really important because uh, there's we're very influenced by appearance, and we're you know we're very influenced by as you say the likes and uh, you know uh, people that are professional at, at, at what they do, and people that have turned it around based on their own experience or, or, or want to enhance their position in front of other people. Uh, and, and, and they're looking for attention too, and, and they can appear to have the answers. But as you say, uh, there's a, there, there's a professional professionalism in there that, that helps people. And, and it's important to learn that way. Okay. My friend, it was, it was really good having a yarn with you. And, um, yeah, you, you, you look after yourself and uh, take care. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll post this up around with, with all the people that I know, and, and I'm sure your advice is, is going to help people. Yeah, of course, for sure. I'd love to share on my, you know, social media too. And if they, you know, need somebody to follow, they can always, uh, you know, join my free Facebook group. So. And, and what's that? Do, 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 I'll, put, I'll put the link up there. Okay, perfect. And, and uh, I'll, I'll grab that off here. And uh, yeah, this lady's really genuine, and yeah, she's got she's got she's got a lot of passion to to help people. So yeah, it's beautiful talking to you. Thanks. Same to you. Okay, my friend. All right. Bye. Take care.
Are you there, Leslie? Oh, why there? Leslie, uh, can you hear me? I sorry about that, Leslie.